What is up heroes, this is Midnight Zero, and welcome to week two of the CFL. We are about to start our battle against, uh, what's his name again? Grumpy Cyndaquil? I don't actually see him, though. Which is not good. So I'm gonna get that figured out for just a moment. Alright, it is time. And again, apologies, uh, my voice I'm recording in little different conditions so I need to be a little bit quieter and there may be a little bit different acoustics but anyways let's uh let's pray for no crowbat and no haxorus though I'm not optimistic hey would you look at that um for what it's worth oh I need to close the timer so admittedly I'm I'm quite surprised by his team I don't see Gyarados I don't see Haxorus um, what do I see? I see Clefable. Apologies if this makes some noise. I'm writing down notes. Phalanx. I see Mamoswine. I also... I don't see Corviknight. What is that madness? This is not the team I expected at all, but that is okay. Corsola and then Amora. I... Never in a million years expected Amora. Okay, um, so at first glance, uh, Rillaboom is going to put in a ton of work. I don't know if he has a Scarfer. It's probably Arctivish, if anything. Um, yeah, I don't really know what to expect from Amora. Blissey should wall that thing. So, regardless, we almost always lead off with Ditto, just because we want to scout information right off the bat. Hopefully he leads Clefable or Mamoswine. Or maybe, do I lead with Rillaboom? Let me check my battle options just to make sure I'm not, you know, um, getting rid of things. Okay, so yeah, people should be able to join in everything. Do I lead with Ditto? If he leads with Mamoswine, I'm still going to switch out anyways. So, yeah, I'll lead with Ditto. He leads with Amora. Okay. Snow warning to be expected. What moves do you have? Stealth Rock, Blizzard, Ancient Power, and Earth Power. Alright. Blizzard. Ancient Power. So, Ancient Power is going to be annoying due to the potential Omni Boost it could get. But even then, these are all special attacks, including Ancient Power, I believe, right? Yeah. So, Blissey should wall this thing. And because Blissey does wall this thing, I'm going to go hard into Blissey, actually. I'm tempted to potentially stay in and Stealth Rock with Ditto, but if he stays in to get up his own Stealth Rock... Yeah, I'm just going to go into, um, he's probably going to stay in to get up his own Stealth Rock, but I'm going to go Blissey to play it safe. He goes Arctivish. Okay, this thing could be Slush Rush, which means it's double speed under the hill, so I need to keep that in mind. And if he's Choice Band, well, this is basically why I have Toxapex, so we'll just go Hard Pex. As he goes for Ficious Rend, which does 33%. I'm going to write down that he has Ficious Rend. And Ficious Rend only did 33%. Although I think that may actually be Banded. Yeah, that's actually got to be Choice Banded. So he is Banded Arctivish. Which means... I can potentially Scald here, or knock off. The question is, what's he going to go into? Probably Mamoswine, maybe Clefable. I think I'm just going to knock. As he goes Mamoswine, I'm surprised, but what does he have? He has a Life Orb. Okay, so he's Life Orb Mamoswine, which confirms that it is not um, Scarf, which is nice. And because it was Life Orb, I feel more comfortable that my Umbreon can actually handle it defensively. So let's do some calcs. So yeah, this is Choice Banded Mamoswine. If he is adamant without any life orb, 
even a superpower would not do too much. Yeah, so we'll be okay, I think, if I go if I go Umbreon here. As he goes for knockoff, which is a pain, because now I don't have my leftovers, but it's somewhat to be expected. I can follow play here, and it'll do quite a bit. It'll do about half. He may have superpower though, so just to be safe, I'm gonna wish as he earthquakes, and it only does 30%. Now the thing is he may still have superpower and have just wanted to put me in range, so I'm going to protect again to be safe. And the more health that Umbreon has, the, the better. So yeah, that's what we'll do. So he probably doesn't have superpower. So he probably doesn't have superpower. We know he has Earthquake and Knock Off. And he probably has Ice Shard and Icicle Crash, if I had to guess. Now, we don't really fear anything from this Pokemon. I think I'm just going to go Hard Blissey again if he's going to get up his Stealth Rock. Yeah, he gets up his Stealth Rock, which makes a lot of sense. He does not have any Hazard Removal on his team, so we'll get up our Stealth Rock here and comfortably live with the fact that we're going to have Stealth Rock damage on his side of the field for the rest of the game. Unfortunately... This means Chandelure is going to get chipped away at pretty regularly. But it's not the end of the world. Otherwise, I'm relatively okay with having Stealth Rock up. I also think um, Rillaboom could put in a ton of work. Once, yeah, once um, Galarian Corsola is a little bit weakened, we can very, and I mean very comfortably, just Grassy Glide almost everything. So he's probably going to go for knockoff again here. We can go Umbreon. We're not too hit KO'd by Earthquake, even after Stealth Rock. Now, this is the tricky thing. I don't think he has superpower, but if he does have superpower, there's a chance it could KO this turn. If I lose Umbreon, I will still be okay. So I'm going to wish here, as he Earthquakes. Okay, so he probably does not have superpower. The hail ends, luckily. We're going to protect, again, just to play it safe. He could go into Phalanx if he wants, but we can very safely switch into Toxapex in that case. So I'm actually not worried about Phalanx right now. Because we can go Pex and, um, and Haze. The thing is... When we come in next time, we're going to be at 62%, which means we're kind of in range to get 2 a KO'd by Earthquake, which is not ideal. But, I mean, either way, I don't stay in here, so I'm just going to go hard Tox effects. He goes for first impression, priority. How much did that do? 9%. So we're going to take a look at a calc real quick. So that confirms that he doesn't have a certain set of moves. Um, is he banded? So that's a means of priority, which is really good to know that he has it, So, because that would do a lot to um, Rillaboom. And it did how much? 8.9%. So he has to be... So he's probably adamant. Yeah, he's probably adamant, but he's not Life Orb. Or Choice Band. So he's probably adamant with some other item. Um... Okay, so what we can do here pretty safely, I mean, he's, I wonder what item he has. I don't actually know, but we can Scald here pretty safely, I think. So he does have Zen Headbutt, which does 35%. Um, I'd like to get a burn if possible, but it's okay if not. We can just recover here if he wants to go for no retreat. That's pretty risky business. The, the Zen Headbutt did how much? 35%? So again, we know he's not Life Orb, yeah, but he's got to be something more... Oh, he's probably like Expert Belt. Yeah, because Adamant, Max Attack, Zen Headbutt to my Toxapex couldn't do more than 33.5, so he has to be some sort of damage boosting item to, in order to do... Um, in order to do 34.9%, which means maybe he's actually Jolly, so not an attack boosting nature, 
and something like Expert Belt, which is where your super effective attacks do an extra 20%. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what he is. Yeah, he's probably expert belt. So, I'm going to write that down. Apologies for the noise. So, he's got first impression. And then... Zen. Okay. So, Toxpex is back at full HP. This Pokemon is scary, but we're just going to knock it off, actually. So he's Calm Mind, which is a pain to deal with, but hopefully we get rid of a Grassy Seed to increase defense. So he's probably a stored power set. We're going to Haze, because we do not want this thing setting up in front of our face. Um, something else that is worth noting is that when Clefable came in, it did not take Rock's damage, so it is a Magic Guard set. It is not an Unaware set, meaning if we have the same stat boosts, it won't, um, what's it called? Uh, it, well, I mean, you guys probably know what Unaware does. Um, so he is Magic Guards, meaning we cannot wear this thing down with passive damage, which is a pain, honestly. But, so he is Calm Mind, and we'll see. He is Psychic. Okay. So that's what I was potentially wondering. The question is, how much did our Skull do? At plus one, it did 9%. So the question is, is Rillaboom going to knock this thing out right off the bat? And he's Psychic, not stored power, notably. So our Skull did 9%. This is Calm. So he's probably max defense, actually. Because that would mean... Because his Spideff was at plus one. Yeah, so he's probably actually max defense. Which means Rillaboom's... Woodhammer has a decent shot of Okoing. Honestly, I think it's good enough that I'm going to go hard into it. As he just calm minds. Although, now that I know, he's actually going to have the grassy train recovery. So, what's he going to go for here? I should have accounted for that. There's still a good chance we straight up Oko him, though. Hmm. Actually, I know he's not going to be Trick, and he's Psychic instead of Psy Shock, so I can pretty safely go Blissey here. I'm actually just going to do that and see if he stays in, scout for any Ice Beam or whatnot. Okay. So notably, he's Moonblast. So what we're actually going to do is Seismic Toss a couple times, and then we're going to teleport out. Because Seismic Toss will ensure that at the end of... So he can go for another Calm Mind if he wants. Psychic and Moonblast, I'm not too concerned. So now what's nice is at the end of next turn, even after Grassy Terrain Recovery, he will... Oh, actually, hopefully... We'll see if he Soft Boils this turn or if he Calm Minds again. He Calm Minds again. Okay, so I can safely go into Rillaboom, except the grassy terrain is going to end, I think. So, what about when the grassy terrain is not up? It would do 63% minimum. So I think what we'll actually do then is just, um... We'll go Toxapex to heal up. Yeah, because Clefable's Psychic isn't going to be doing too much. Even at plus four, Moonblast and Psychic are not doing too much to um, Chansey. Not Chansey, Blissey. So I'll go Toxapex, and I'll bait the Psychic. And then after I regenerate or, or switch out, I'll basically be at full again. So I can just go back into Blissey. As he goes for Psychic, probably. He goes for Soft Boiled, surprisingly. So now we can actually Seismic Toss once and then teleport out. 
Moonblast does 38. That's actually a pretty hefty chunk. But he's at 75% now, which means that after I U-turn or I teleport out into Rillaboom, he will be within Woodhammer range, no matter what. Because after Leftovers Recovery, or after Grassy Train Recovery... Oh, man. <sighs> Does he outspeed me? No, he doesn't. I could always go Ditto. Hmm. Darn. I was kind of to hope he didn't soft boil there, but I know his full set. He's calling mine Psychic, Moonblast, and Soft Boiled. I mean, the thing is, at plus six. Gotta have some special attack investment, right? So at plus four, his Moonblast did 38%. Right? It did 37.5. So he has to have a little bit of special attack investment, at least. So he's not fully defensive, potentially. I want to go into here. This is tough. I could go Ditto. Or I could do the same thing with Toxapex. The thing is, Blissey will potentially get 2 hit KO'd afterwards, so I think I'm actually just going to go Rillaboom again and get up the grassy terrain. And then I will outspeed this thing. So I can actually U-turn here. He'll probably Moonblast. Hmm. He'll probably Moonblast. The thing is, after rocks, there's no guarantee Blissey lives that. So do I go Pex on a potential Moonblast? I think I do. I'll U-turn here. We do 13%, which is actually really important because now I can gauge how defensive it is. Okay, so it is near max defense. I'm going to go Toxapex here. Hope he doesn't Psychic. He moon blasts. Crit, which is very unfortunate, but not the end of the world. Because now... So, he can safely moon blast again here, which is why that makes a difference. So, I don't like this situation but I think my best bet is actually to go Ditto and just click Moonblast to try to weaken him to the point that Rillaboom can knock it out with um, Woodhammer. Yeah, if he didn't get a crit there, my Toxapex would be out of range of Moonblast, meaning he can just click Moonblast again here, but I think I need to go Ditto. It's, it's a real bummer. goes for Psychic and gets a critical hit. Wow, so those are... So... That's pretty important. <laughs> um, because Ditto could try to chip away at it to the point that it's within Woodhammer range. But now I have to go Blissey and... And, uh hope for the best. So we'll soft boil it here as he potentially moon blasts. He calm mines again. Okay. So what's nice is I can get off a seismic toss 
and grassy terrain will end at the end of next turn. And then, so the idea is going to be Seismic Toss into Teleport. Moonblast is still not doing a whole lot. And thanks to the grassy terrain, I have a decent amount of recovery. He actually only has 20 Moonblasts, and I have 15 um, soft boileds. It's not really like where I want to be thinking, but he's not going to soft boiled. Yes! Okay, so we teleport into Rillaboom here. And we just click Woodhammer. Oh, but I forgot. <laughs> Again. <laughs> um, it's okay. Uh, if he, with his current defense investment, even max defense takes like 82.4 minimum and does up to 97.4. I'm just gonna Woodhammer here. He lived! What? Are you kidding me? That roll at 87%, that was a 68.8% chance to knock him out if he's max defense. And I don't even think he's max defense. <sighs> You've got to be kidding me. Well, there goes my offensive presence. Um, so at this point, I mean, we can go Chandelure. Can we still win? Yes, we still can, because we have Toxapex to handle um, the other Pokemon, and they don't have, you know, reliable recovery, but... My god, that's very frustrating. Um, so, Chandelure still knocks this out with Shadow Ball and Energy Ball, even if... Well, actually, let's see. If he's plus 6 defense, Shadow Ball does 14 to 17%. <laughs> That's from Spec Chandelier. Flamethrower to 17, though, so we can go Chandelier here, and that's my best bet. Um, so what do we do here? Do we Shadow Ball? Do we... Um, if he has some amount of Spideff investment... Okay, I can still pretty safely go for either Shadow Ball or Flamethrower and knock him out. The question is, what's going to do more to everything else? Flamethrower is stronger overall, so I'm going to go for Flamethrower, but I cannot even believe that that didn't die to Rillaboom. I know it's obviously possible. If he was max defense, it was a 68% chance that he got knocked out, so a 32% chance he lived, but wow. And I wouldn't have had to even worry about that if Ditto didn't get critically hit. <laughs> so... All right, this thing comes in. I can pretty safely go... I have to go Toxapex, actually. This he goes for Bulldoze, which is super effective, but does 5% damage. So that's fine. Now, did I already knock off? I knocked off Phalanx already. I think, because I don't have Toxic on my team, I'm just going to Scald, go for a burn. I don't think he'd stay in. I already revealed knock off. And getting a burn on anything else would be really nice. Okay, so Amora comes in. It has Ancient Power and Earth Power. It could potentially go for Earth Power here. I'm going to take this as an opportunity to bring in either Umbreon or Blissey. I think Blissey's the safer bet. I will take less damage, 6%, notably. And um, I can... Seismic Toss, if I want. He can go Galarian Corsola if he wants, but I'd like to get the damage on everything else, actually. Or I could just heal up. Honestly, I'm gonna go for the healing. So he goes Phalanx. 
So we're pretty safely in. He takes the rocks damage and the hail damage, which is fine. I'm gonna go Toxapex because I'm at max HP and he doesn't even to a KO me with Zen Head, but he goes for the no retreat. So he cannot switch out, notably. I'm gonna Haze. He goes for Zen Headbutt, does 57%. We don't get flinched, which is really nice. The hail is gone, so I think we, well, we have a chance at living the next one. Oh, man. He's expert belt, though. So... Yeah, and I think he was adamant. I think the last time he did it, it did like 38% or something. Let me look through this real quick. Zen Headbutt did 34.9%. Okay, so I can pretty safely recover here. What? He knocked it out? Oh man, that's really bad. That's really bad because now Arctivish wins. Yeah, that's not good at all. Um, so I have to go Chandelier here. Oof, that's really bad. It did 37%? Hmm. Plus one, just out of curiosity, I guess. Plus one, Zen Headbutt did 56.9%. So, I mean, he's got to be Adamant Expert Belt. So, at neutral, Zen Headbutt, okay. It can do 30, for anywhere from like 34 to 40. So, I've got to click a move here. Um, I think I click... Oh man, this is, this is scary. Shadow Ball or Flamethrower? Let's see here. Between Umbreon and... If he's banded, oh, that does so much damage. My only way of winning, I think, is if I stall out the hail with Umbreon and can then sweep with Chandelure, but that that's going to come down to a speed tie with Mammoth Swine anyways. So let's see how much Amora takes. Um, it's potentially Choice Scarf from Chandelure's attacks. I think I'm going to go for the Shadow Ball. We knocked that out. He can probably go Mama Swine here if he wants. He goes Amora. So he's getting up the hail. I'm going to go Blissey here. Actually, no, I think I go... Umbreon's not going to live a Choice Banded hit from... Arctivish. Blissey probably will take a lot more. Yeah, Blissey definitely won't. So I actually need to... I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Umbreon here. Hopefully he doesn't double switch into Arctivish. He goes for Ancient Power. No Omni Boost, which is really nice. So we're just gonna wish here. We need to stall out the hail. He goes for Blizzard. Does not get the Freeze, which is really nice. We need to protect here. I should have paid attention to how long the hail lasted before, to see if he has the uh, Icy Rock item. But I don't know. 
But yeah, we need to stall out this hail. He goes Mammoth Swine, which is interesting. Because Mammoth Swine doesn't have a way of... What's it called? Um, actually, I can live any one hit he wants to go for, so I'll wish again. But... Even if he's Metronome, we can interrupt it with Protect. Nice crit. Lovely. So we'll Protect again, and that will be the end of Hail for the game. Which means Arctivish has a chance of not actually sweeping. It means Chandelure can still potentially win. He goes Arctivish, takes plenty of damage. We go for the Protect. Now the thing is... He outspeeds me no matter what, but I need to see how much damage Arctivish takes from Chandelure. It takes a lot. Hmm, how much does it take from Shadow Ball? Not a lot. <laughs> and he probably has some sort of, um, hmm. I mean, I guess we can protect here. See what he wants to go for. Clicks Vicious Rend, unsurprisingly. The thing is... I can go into Chandelure afterwards. And then, if he, the only thing that doesn't die from Flamethrower is Umbri, or is um, Galarian Corsola, and that's my only opportunity for Eevee to heal up. So I basically need to pick a sack at this point, and it's either Blissey or Umbreon. I think Umbreon will actually be more helpful in the long term. How much does Blissey take from Mamoswine? It takes too much from Earthquake. So we're going to sack Blissey here. This will probably die. Yep. And now we go Chandelure. And I think we click Flamethrower here. Flamethrower should knock this out, even if it has a decent amount of HP investment. Because he's at 76%. And the thing is, Galarian Corsola will get to a KO'd by Flamethrower as well, if it's defensive. But I don't have that read yet. I think I Flamethrower either way. He goes Amora, it's not going to set up the hail. That's really important to note. He goes Galarian Corsola. Now, this is the tough part, because... Because if I switch out, the next time Chandelier comes back in, it's going to be an Ice Shard range from Mamoswine. Which means I would need something else to take care of Mamoswine. I think I'm going to go Hard Umbreon here. Hopefully he doesn't switch Dark Divish. He doesn't. He goes for the Shadow Ball. Now... I think he can hard switch into either Mamoswine or Arctivish. Arctivish will probably die from a follow play. This is so tense. Um, it might, but probably will not actually, because its own attack stat is that not good. Hmm. I think the play is to Baton Pass. But, but, uh, Umbreon is so low. It might die from an Earthquake from Mamoswine. And that's the problem. However, Umbreon will actually live one hit from Arctivish. I think I have to Baton Pass... Oh, I 
feel like I lose in this situation. I have to heal up with Umbreon. So I'll wish. He goes Mamoswine, which I think was actually a losing play for him. Because now... Do I click Foul Play here, or do I click Protect? My Foul Play will probably knock him out, but afterwards, will I have enough HP to live a hit? I'm gonna Protect. He stays in. Awesome. So we're back at pretty much full HP. So we're going to Wish again. He goes for Icicle Crash, probably going for Flinches. And now what we can actually do is... Do I want to knock him out, though? Or do I follow play here? Actually... I think I baton pass here. Hmm. Do I baton pass and heal up Chandelure? So I don't need to worry about an ice shard? I think I do. Ah, oh, that does so much. Oh no, I just lost. I totally just lost. Because now, well, actually, Arctivish doesn't outspeed Chandelure. So I need to click Flamethrower here. God, this is so intense. Flamethrower will definitely knock this out. So will Shadow Ball, actually. And notably, if I want to keep Arctivish out, how much HP? Arctivish, after another Stealth Rock switch in, will actually die to Shadow Ball. So I think Shadow Ball might be my winning play here. After Rocks, I think Corsola will die to Shadow Ball as well. Even if he's Spit Death, there's a good chance. So I think I'm just gonna Shadow Ball here. <gasps> he outspeed me! He won the speed tie! He won the speed tie. Wow. I... <laughs> Wow. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. <laughs> I'll say GG. I'll say GG. But I I <laughs> I can hardly accept that. <laughs> From Rillaboom not Okoing to getting crit on my ditto, to even just the critical hit on the Toxapex, to winning this final speed tie, which if I won, I, I won. Um, after what I thought I did to outplay most of the match, um, that's really disappointing. <laughs> that's really disappointing. <laughs> what was it, like a 68% roll on, on Clefable? And it wouldn't have even been a roll if Ditto hadn't gotten crit and O-Code. And yeah, um, this is really disappointing. I put myself in a position to win too, because Shadow Ball won from here on out. Yeah, I mean, I guess... I guess uh, it's really hard to say it's a good game.
because I felt like luck really beat me out this time. So, that's a real shame. That's Pokemon, though. So, I guess most of the time I feel like I would have won this match, and I'll have to live with that and do better next week. But, until the next match, it's Moon Knight Zero, and this mission is complete. <laughs>